All right, so today's electrical, um, and this is the other side. So we did the supply side with the batteries and all that and the inverter, and now that's going to feed our load center. So we looked at a few of the RV load centers, and they just didn't seem very attractive. Um, this is going to go in our bay, and most of them are made to go inside. Um, we didn't feel the need to keep this inside for any reason. We just think it uses up space and we don't plan on flipping a bunch of breakers back and forth and things like that. So this is mostly a safety thing. So we bought a load center and we had a little bit of trouble picking one out because there's just, there's a, there's so many and then there's tandem and AFCI, GFCI breakers and things like that. So we had a little bit of trouble deciding, okay, which one should we go with? But after reading on the forums and doing research and stuff like that, we decided on this Square D um, QO series. Um, so Square D has two um, like larger series that they have. One is the home line and one is the QO. So the QO is supposed to be like the higher end um, and it really wasn't very much more expensive. And we read a bunch of reviews where there's electricians and they're like, I've never had any trouble with a QO system. I've replaced a few home line systems. But both of them seem like they were plenty reliable. So, but we just went with the QO because it was almost the same price and it seemed like there was a nicer set of features with them. They seem like they, um, it seemed like they attached more securely, um, which, you know, is, Maybe as we're bouncing down the road or whatever, maybe they'll have a better chance of staying in. But we wanted to get um, just a, a picture and everything of it, of what it looks like before we installed it in the bay. So we're mounting it on a piece of wood. So we've cut a piece of wood and painted it and done countersinking on the screws. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and put our load center on there. And then our power will come in through the bottom. And so for the, for the power, we kind of had this weird issue because we have what's called a boosting inverter and we have 50 amp shore power and so you would think oh 50 amps is enough so that's what we had thought at first so we were just going to use our normal cable we were just going to use this guy here um, which is a 50 a 50 amp cable um, the problem is with a boosting inverter, you can actually get much higher amperage going through your system. So this box is rated at 125 amps. Um, our inverter can put out 10,000 watts, which is something like 82-ish amps, 84 amps, something like that. And so with boosting though, I, we can get 50 from shore power and then boost it another 42. So that makes a total of 92. So we didn't feel safe using the 50 amp cord. So we're gonna use um, two gauge wire. So two gauge for our mains. We've got two, two colors of two gauge and then I think a number six for the grounding cable. So. This is a 125 box, so there's only three legs. Um, 50 amp is coming in with four legs, but we don't use the last leg. So um, this should be plenty. Um, this, we just wanted to be doubly safe that everything was gonna be within spec and, and we weren't gonna worry about burning up any wires. So just in case we wanna boost our inverter through the 50 amps. Hopefully we always stay under 50 amps. There really shouldn't be much reason for us to use more, but just in case we're going with a lot bigger wire. Um, and so this is our setup. All right, so one last thing. Um, we modified this box just real slightly here by putting in this copper bus bar between the two legs. So this particular load center can be a 240 volt uh, layout, which means you have L1, L2, or some people call it A and B uh, coming in from <clears throat> from outside. So it would be A and B, then the neutral here, and then we'll have a ground lug on the side. Um, we've tied these together now, so this becomes a 120 volt box. Um, so we can tie into either one of these uh, with our hot leg. So we've essentially turned this into a 120 volt uh, load center.
All right, our panel's almost ready to go in. So we've got the wire nut down here that kind of couples those in. Um, we've got our main wires running in here. These are two gauge, and I believe this is a four or six gauge. I think this is six gauge uh, grounding wire. And we've got our circuits laid out into passenger side and driver side. So we've got these up here. Um, there's strain relief for the wires that are going to come up out of the top and that's going to be all our our service wires that are going to go out to all the various things that we have to plug in. Um, for wire we have um, we ordered 500 feet of this Waytech um, it's a 12-3 uh, marine cable so we've seen a lot of um, we've seen a lot of controversy on the forums over people using uh, extension cable and people using Romex, which is like that solid wire that you use inside the house. Um, this is stranded cable. Um, it's supposed to be the right thing to use. It was pretty pricey, um, but we got it from a company called Waytech, and it was you know it was the cheapest place we found it. For, so we didn't mind paying a little bit extra to use the right thing. So anyway, um, this is about ready to go in, so we wanted to kind of get a picture of it before we before we put it in and kind of describe how we wired everything up. On this cable, this is actually a red cable, and we had to put um, a white piece of heat shrink on it just so it would be labeled correctly. So this is the neutral wire, this is the hot wire, and the green one is the, is the ground. So um, it should be pretty much ready to go in. We're going to try to put it in and wire it in to the inverter. Um. You ready? You're just gonna have to throw it in there. I'll try and line it up. Oh man, that's kind of tricky with these in the way. Yeah, there seems to be plenty of room, right? and a half. Okay, so now we'll need to cut the other ones a little bit longer than this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how much longer do you think? I don't know, maybe like another inch or so. Be about the same length, right? I think so. <clears throat> there. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of a waste to do these, but okay. So let's um, let's dress them up. So this needs a lug. They all need lugs now. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so we've got the box put in. Um, we've shrank these down and cut them to length um, and put um, the lugs on them. So we're getting ready to, we'll put them back behind and then bring them up through 
into the inverter. So we got to remember that this one, although it's red, is actually the white one and the black one is the hot one. So this is, this is uh, the neutral, this is hot, and then this is ground. So we should be ready to wire them all in. All right, so we've got our sub panel all wired in. Um, it goes down through the bottom and it goes across and we couldn't really record what we were doing in there because it's just so extremely tight. So, um, in fact, we're using mirrors and stuff to make sure things are working out right. So anyway, we've got it all wired in. We've got this guy. So there should be a connection here. We haven't wired the battery yet because, um, we haven't fully configured the system yet. So we'll put breakers in here. We have a front panel for it. And then um, we'll have the wires coming out of the top here. So we've got um, 11 strain reliefs up here because we have um, our plan calls for 11 circuits coming out of this guy, uh, two of which will be down here in the bay. So we'll have one circuit in the bay and then one for the engine heaters. So we've got two engine heaters back there. Um, whereas the if the temperature gets really low, those will come on. Then the rest are inside for things like the front room and the kitchen and refrigerator. All those things are all planned out. So we'll have a, a sketch as we get further along that we'll share um, of how we wired our thing. But this is going to be the heart of our AC side of the system is our inverter plus this box. So it's it's pretty much ready to go, ready for the next step.